Hey guys, my name's Kyle and welcome to my very first tech demo where I'll be reviewing and demonstrating various open source software that I think will be of interest to other sound designers. I wanted to start with a program that helped get me through my very first year of university, a program called Pole Stretch. Created by Paul Nasca, Pole Stretch is designed for the extreme stretching of audio. While most doors are capable of warping audio, Pole Stretch takes this to the next level. The program can be used to shorten sounds to 1 100th of its original time, or it can be used to stretch them up to 1 quintillion times their original length. This makes it capable of turning a 3 second sound into one that would take over 3 billion years to finish playing. Pole Stretch really shines for ambient soundscapes, capable of creating unique drones and textures from almost any sound. Something to be aware of is the program doesn't process sounds as a single piece, instead splitting the source into smaller windows or samples, something the user is able to control. Larger sample sizes have a poor time resolution but great frequency resolution. As recommended by NASCAR, a window of 7 to 12k is good for most music. Samples over 100k can be useful for special effects, creating a smear-like effect even when the audio isn't being stretched. The only thing that I feel is holding Pole Stretch back is a rather clunky UI, which originally took some time to understand. That's it only takes a small amount of playing around to master the basics, and once I was directed to the tutorial website, it was no longer a problem, something I'll leave in the description for you. Unfortunately, the program does not function as a plugin, so sounds must be imported and bounced out between this program and whatever door you're using at the time. Once you open the program, you'll notice four main tabs, parameters, process, binaural beats, and write to file. By default, the program opens on the parameters tab. Once a sound has been imported using the file tab, Adjusting the stretch and window size sliders will produce various textures depending on how far each slider is pushed. The mode can be adjusted using the drop down menu at the top right, which includes stretch, hyper stretch, or shorten. With these parameters, we can create static textures, but if we want to be even more creative, we can use the stretch multiplier function. When enabled, we can draw points to represent stretch values against a specific position. This can lead to some interesting pushing and pulling effects. The process tab allows us to further apply processing to our textures using various spectral effects. The harmonics tool can be used to strip back the sound into its fundamental and harmonics. The octave tool can be used to generate different octaves of the original signal to be mixed back into the texture. Spread can be used to increase the bandwidth of the harmonics. Moving the slider all the way to the right will generate white noise in place of the sound. Tonal slash noise can be used to separate whatever program determines to be signal and noise, which can then be useful for removing unwanted artifacts like reverb. The process tab also includes a compressor, pitch and frequency shift, and a bandpass filter, all of which is pretty self-explanatory. The binaural beats tab allows us to create well, binaural beats and uses node-based controls just like the stretch multiplier function. You can flip the left and right channels or sum the two together into a mono signal to create a tremolo effect. The final tab is used to output sections of audio which is useful for those extra long textures which might, well, when you might only require a few minutes out of an hour. Finally, the last thing to note is that Pole Stretch supports WAV, MP3, and OGG files. For me, most recently, I've used Pole Stretch in the production of the song Static Transmission, combining synthesizers with their stretch counterparts for a more spaced out sound. I will provide a link for that in the description. In the past, I've used it for sound design, creating ambient textures for digital environments. Most notably, I've stretched the sounds of laughter and combined it with the sound of guinea pigs weaking to create a really eerie, whirring drone which would appear every time the character Death would appear. Uh, this was for a VR project where the user would walk through a hell-like environment. 
Great, uh, so that concludes my video. If you have any experiences using this program and have picked up some neat tricks, I would love to hear about it. So leave a comment below. You can expect more of these reviews tri-weekly and until then, have a good one.